Yes, my question is, uh, what percent of the climate uh, temperature records is due to surface stations? What percent or what amount of the temperature record is due to surface station measurement? Well, with, inspection, with respect to the uh, UAH curve that uh, Dr. Michael showed, that's essentially satellite. We put together additional products look, using station observations, um, which, are, which are all record-based and thermometer-based. The problem, of course, with those is that we don't have observations in high latitudes and high altitudes and generally in people where places don't want to live because it's not livable. So we have a bias towards towards urbanization effects, we have bias where people live, we don't have them out over the oceans. So the, the, the gauge, the, the thermometers themselves are really not equal, evenly distributed. So that's one of the fundamental problems. We also have the same thing with changing instrumentation from thermometers to electric resistance to height, to, you know, all sorts of that stuff that goes on in that. So that's one of the reasons why the satellite record is a little more trustworthy and at least you're looking at the planet from a uniform sense rather than just simply measuring a couple observations that aren't equally distributed. The converse of that is that actually uh, the most measurements are in the oceans because there's more ocean than land. Uh, they are highly suspect and as a matter of fact NOAA has been able to change all the readings for the last 50 years of ocean measurements to prove that in fact global warming has not stopped for the last 18 years, a subject that we'll talk about also tomorrow afternoon. Isaac, next one. Whoops, Pat, go. Oh, sorry. I would also like to, to, to uh, add on to, to David's answer with regard to the, the recent Carl et al. paper that says that uh, there's no such thing as the pause. Uh, what really happened in that paper was um, that the ocean surface temperature data, which 70 percent of the Earth, of course, is that surface, uh, was pretty dramatically altered. Uh, taking, the, uh, taking the temperature of the surface of the ocean is kind of difficult. Uh, it used to be done, you just can't throw a thermometer over the ship because you're going to have to bring it up. So what happened originally is people would throw canvas buckets out into the water and they'd haul them up and they'd stick a thermometer in it. Well, guess what? That bucket functions like a wet bulb thermometer. It swings in the wind and it cools off. Uh, so that was probably giving lower temperatures. How do you account for that? Well, a bunch of people went out in boats and started throwing canvas buckets over the side and comparing that to the temperature. Obviously huge errors. Then we switched to, to temperatures measured at the intake tube uh, on a ship for cooling water for the engines. Now those are located at different levels in the water. If you have a big draft ship, it's way the hell down there. If it's a small ship, it's near the surface. And by the way, the ship is sailing around in the sun, picking up heat, and the engine is also emitting heat. So it's known that those are too high. Then we have satellite records that begin around 1978 that sense the surface temperature of the ocean. Those are pretty good. They're good enough for the National Hurricane Center to use them every day. Uh, for their hurricane prognostication. So I, I, I think we, we basically, our lives depend upon that if we live uh, near the shore. So what did Carl et al. do? They threw out all the satellite data. And instead, uh, uh, they relied upon the shipboard measurements and a new network of buoys that began to be deployed in the 70s. Is that about right? Yeah. And more and more buoys are, uh, are, 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 are in the ocean. It's becoming a substantial fraction displacing the ship data. So, of course, I just said the ship data is too damn hot because the ship's too damn hot. So what did NOAA do? It, I, sit, I, I'm glad you're sitting down. They added two-tenths of a degree Fahrenheit to every buoy measurement. I'll repeat that. They added two-tenths of a degree Fahrenheit to every buoy measurement. Now, seen as there are more and more buoys, and the idea is to cover the earth with buoys, what's going to happen if you add two-tenths of a degree to more and more readings? It's not rocket science, folks. You put a warming trend in the data, and not only that, because there's going to be more buoys next year than there are this year, you're going to induce a warming trend in the data in the future. Aside from that, there's no problem with the paper. <laughs>
the, the world is uh, altering their entire economic system based on things as ridiculous as this. Okay, Isaac, All who's right. next? Isaac. Final Jeopardy, this is the last question, and I need a 30-second answer from the panel. No, we have, we I'm going to go this. over an extra five minutes, so I'm going to take five minutes of your 15-minute break. You and Keeley go. can have a grunge match That's about okay. this later. Go. Uh, so. Yeah, uh, quick, a quick question um, back here. <clears throat> It seems to me, just listening to you uh, this morning, that uh, in order to, that g the good science that is being done is being done by a lot of independent scientists. Those scientists who are uh, uh, you know, showing the data that's opposite to what you were showing us today are being funded by a lot of it by federal government or in federal agencies. Am I correct in that thinking? Can you address that issue, please? I may say very shortly, yes. Uh, may, maybe basically we're interested in finding out the answer, the truth, and then uh, we have no axe to grind. I really have no axe to grind. I have no theory to support or anything. I only love my wife and my family. That's it. I don't love the sun and all that stuff. I mean, it's just very nice stuff, but uh, we learn about it. That's all. The bad science clearly is being funded by uh, the government, no question about it. But uh, it's, it's going to come to an end. Uh, be optimistic. It uh, might take a few more years and hopefully a new president, but it's going to come to an end. Next question. Isaac? Jay, can I make a quick answer to that? Sure. Uh, this, 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 there's a, a hard evidence that science is being biased uh, by federal funding, and it is this. Uh, if, I, if I apply for uh, a grant, it's going to be uh, in the form of a hypothesis that I'm going to test. And if I get negative results, I'm not going to get renewed. So what's happening in the scientific literature, and this is quite remarkable, is in the last 20 years, the number of positive results, meaning verification of hypothesis, has risen dramatically. That's impossible. And to make it even better, just so you get it, uh, as countries adopt more of the American style for advancement in the profession, meaning uh, university promotion and tenure committee meeting, one, how much money did you bring in? Two, was it federal? Three, what did you publish? Was it any good? Four, how much more money are you going to bring in? Answer one of those negative and you, you're, you're driving a taxi. Anyway, so the more that happens, the more positive results are published. And finally, if you have a multi-authored paper and you uh, international paper, and you add an American author to the author team, the probability that a positive result will be reported doubles. Aside from that, science isn't corrupted. I, I'm, I'm told we're going to have to end. We're 12 minutes to the, uh, the next panel. These three people have done a magnificent job. Give them a big hand.